Hi, I'm Femi OK, and join the stream today. We are going to look at a new book that is causing a lot of controversy around the world. Stay tuned to find out. And of course, we're on YouTube, we're on Twitter. If you have a comment about American Dirt, we want to hear about it. I'm Deborah Bonello. I'm a freelance journalist in Mexico covering organized crime and drug trafficking. And you are in the stream. The book is called American Dirt and it tells the story of a middle-class Mexican woman and her eight-year-old son who are suddenly forced to flee for their lives and seek refuge across the U.S. border. Of all the news stories I've ever heard about immigration and people trying to get to this country, this story really opened my heart and changed the way I will see migrants forever. Oprah loves the book. It has earned a coveted spot in the Oprah Winfrey Book Club and garnered praise by the authors John Grisham and Stephen King, as well as Mexican-American authors Sandra Cisneros and Erica Sanchez. The novel, which is, was written by an author who is neither Mexican nor a migrant, is now at the centre of a debate over who gets to tell the stories of historically marginalised people. Critics online say the book is rife with stereotypes and cultural misrepresentations. The controversy also highlights the issues that can result from a lack of diversity in a white-dominated U.S. publishing industry. Joining us to talk about this in Long Beach, California, Miriam Gerber. She is a writer, podcaster and artist whose widely shared book review of American Dirt helped spark a more critical look at the novel. In St. Louis, Missouri, Ignacio Sanchez Prado. He is a professor of Spanish, Latin American studies and film and media studies at the Washington University in St. Louis. And in Edinburgh, Texas, David Bowles, a Mexican-American author who teaches at the University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. Good to have you, everybody. You've all read the book, which is a great start. Uh, Miriam, quick yes. review for us. While I show people what you said about the book back in December, what would you mm -hmm. say? What's the plot? Let's start with the plot, first of all. Okay, so the plot is basically that uh, a middle-class bookseller living in Acapulco who flirted with a narco uh, has to go on the run in order to save her own life and her son's life because she's now being pursued by this narco. Um, she has to go on the run and uh, make it to the United States, uh, land of freedom. Like, that's essentially the, the plot. And then when you boiled it down and were asked to write a review, I'm, I'm just going to show people your review that you've got pinned to the top of your Twitter page right now. Uh, you were not complimentary at all. Because? Uh -uh. Why? Uh, well, because the book is really bad. It's a tacky book. Mm -hmm. It's a poorly written book. Uh, it misrepresents Mexico. So many people have written about this subject so well and so elegantly. And it's grotesque that this book is being championed and placed on a pedestal as if it's representative of uh, a universal migrant experience, as if it is representative of Mexican sensibility. And it's absolutely not. Ignacia. Um, that's, that's the beef that I have. Ignacia, go ahead. I see you nodding. Well, and I think that part of the problem is that many of us uh, spend a, long, a lot of time teaching people in the United States about our country. And the ideas that people have about Mexico have very significant electoral consequences. People vote on the basis of these representations. People support or reject immigration on the basis of this representation. People support or reject the war on drugs on the basis of this representation. And if you look at the way Mexico is represented here, it is not substantially different than a lot of media products that are very anti-Mexican and actually support negative stereotypes that then lead to anti-immigration politics and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. David. Yep. Yeah, well, you just heard in that clip from, um, from Oprah that she talks about how of all the stories she's heard about people migrating from the violence in Central uh, America and the cartel, like drug cartel issues in Mexico coming to the U.S., this book is the one story that made her open her heart. The problem is this book is a work of fiction, and it's a work of fiction that's set in uh, what most of us agree is an alternate universe, Mexico, because it has nothing to do with the Mexico that we know and love. Um, it is full of these kind of Hollywood um, 
thriller B movie tropes. And I'm sure that lots of people in your audience have had this experience where they've seen their culture depicted in Hollywood films in ways that are frankly insulting and that don't, um, you know, encompass all of the nuances of their lives and their religions and their hopes and fears and dreams. And that's what's happened here. It's um, a book written for the white gaze, um, ostensibly because Janine Cummins and Flatiron Books and their principal author, Oprah Winfrey, who has multiple books out from that publisher, um, wanted to raise consciousness in the, in the, you know, the white community in the United States about the problems of Mexico and give a voice to the faceless brown mass, as Janine says. The irony is that we have been writing books, Mexicans and Mexican-Americans, who make up 18% of the population in the U.S., by the way, have been writing books and trying to get them published for years and years and years. Our voices only make up less than 3% of the books published every year and we get paid very little for it and for someone to take our story and write it to the white gaze and, and earn more than a million dollars for it with the imprimatur of oprah winfrey no less is, is let's is calling let's boil down boil down this this white white gaze miriam you go ahead what what does white gaze mean when you were reading the book what were you seeing I was, uh, when I read the book and I uh, took note of the white gaze, I took note of the fact that uh, the book is written in such a way that if uh, a white reader is engaging with it, they are able to place themselves in this position of superiority where they're looking down upon uh, an inferior group of people. Mexicans are an inferior group of people. Central Americans um, are an inferior group of people. Um, indigenous folk of the Americas are an inferior group of people. And white people can congratulate themselves for empathizing, and I'm using air quotes, empathizing with these folks because um, they're capable of temporarily inhabiting their skin and then taking it off. So it is um, an adventure in pity porn, so to speak. Ignacio, we're being watched live on YouTube right now. Can I put this to you? This is Elizabeth, who's on YouTube watching us. She said she's had a lot of discussions like this. If someone hasn't lived the experience, should they be the ones writing, making art about it, especially when people of colour are underrepresented? <clears throat> so what I would say is that what makes you an authority on something is not where you're from, but whether you know about it. Uh, there are books by Mexicans that have been challenged in Mexico in particular regarding the way they, commo they commodify and sell the question of the drug war. There's a creator called Osvaldo Zavala, who's a good uh, friend of mine, who has pointed this out about many Mexican books. There are also books by Americans. One recent one is on the plane of snakes by Paul Thoreau who travels to Mexico, writes extensively about it, but he never actually pretends to know something he doesn't. What is infuriating about this book is that it is a, an incredibly ignorant book that is pushed by a massive apparatus of publicity as knowledgeable. And the apparatus of publicity is so large mm -hmm. that it may actually end up being the only book about Mexico that many readers read. Ah. And they will come out thinking that this is an accurate representation of the country, of the immigration issue, of violence in Mexico, and it's not any of those things. Yes, David. No, I was. I am agreeing with Ignacio 100%. Um, this is a problem, and I wrote about it in the New York Times, that the publishing industry has, that they um, put all their emphasis on that one big title per year or per season. Uh, Janine Cummins wrote this book, uh, gave it to her editor right after... Um, Trump had become president, and we were suffering like really agonizing debates at a national level about children being separated from their families and being put in cages and so forth. And so, you know, it's it's really kind of disgusting that Flatiron would want to tap into that zeitgeist um, and make so much money off of it. Um, again, um, you know, working behind the scenes to make sure that Oprah selected for a book club, you know, investing so much money in it, throwing a million dollars at Janine Cummins for the yeah. work that she'd done. Um, and um, it is, you know, it, it's just indicative of how broken the system is. And we are really pushing with our hashtag uh, Dignidad Literaria, which is literary dignity, mm. to get people and to to tell their stories and, and show that their voices um, exist. Absolutely. And can I add something to this? Go ahead. There has been there has been a sort of let them eat cake flavor 
to the to the to the campaign to push this book, which is infuriating and disgusting. So um, it became uh, public knowledge that Flatiron launched a party in order to introduce this book at um, a bookseller's event, and. Um, centerpieces that looked like mini border walls wrapped in barbed wire adorned tables while people dined on lobster, right? Mm. So there was this torture chic, this torture aesthetic that was being used to promote the book. Um, there's a photograph that's been, become notorious where uh, manic a manicure that matches the book cover uh, 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 made uh, viral news and the manicure features barbed wire, right? Mm. Which is a symbol of atrocity. And now atrocity has become chic. Atrocity has become fashion. Atrocity has become commodified. And to me, that's the apex of Samaria. Trumpism. Samaria. I'm going to wear the border on my fingernails. Yeah. Samir, let me, let me share this with you. You, you. you, all of our guests are across this. Some of the hashtags and the conversations people are having. American dirt. I'm not American dirt. Writing my Latino novel, that one I highly recommend, very amusing. And Dignidad Literia, which is talking about authentic literature from the Latino, Latina, Latina X experience. Let me just put a pause on this conversation about the particular book because it's a much bigger conversation okay. to have. Oh, but, absolutely. But having said that, in the last 24 hours, this is what Flat Iron did. They apologised. They picked up on all of the critiques that you've been talking about, sharing with our audience, and they apologised. Let me show you what uh, Flat Iron actually said. We should never have claimed that it was a novel that defined the migrant experience. There's a much longer apology in there, uh, and apparently they are listening. But so. at the same time, if you go a little bit further down that apology, yeah. you'll mm -hmm. see that they canceled mm -hmm. the book tour. And the, and the reason they did it was because of vitriolic rancor, quote unquote, uh -huh. and also because they are, are they're afraid of threats of physical violence. And these these sorts of things in the United States, for your audience that doesn't know it, mm -hmm. um, these uh, tropes. Um, that try to paint uh, Mexican Americans, Mexicans, Latinx people in general, as as Miriam was saying, inferior, but also barbaric and violent and so forth, have been used again and again to, to inflict violence on our community. Yeah. We've been deported in mass twice in the in the past hundred years. Yep. Uh, it, millions of Mexican Americans deported, many of them citizens of the U.S. during the the uh, 30s and in the 50s. Um, schools were segregated yes. for the longest time, um, and, and we, we 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 remember this violence. The, the, we have sure. a like a cultural memory. I would like so to when add. We, go ahead, maybe. Yes. I'm sorry. I would like Children. to add that I grew up in a town named Santa Maria, California. I grew up there in the 80s. We had a mayor who was known as Mr. Santa Maria. Mr. Santa Maria ran for mayor on an anti-Mexican campaign over and over and over. He would come on television and do his Mr. Santa Maria routine, but uh, he would also emphasize that our town was populated by Mexicans. Good Mexicans versus bad Mexicans. Bad Mexicans are Mexicans who displeased him. And he argued that all these Mexicans ought to be rounded up and sent to concentration camps along the border until the United States could figure out what to do with the bad Mexicans. I have been dealing with this bad Mexican trope my whole entire life. And now I'm watching this trope reach its logical culmination. Miriam and David and Ignacio, uh, we can spend the whole show talking about bad Mexican tropes. Uh, we won't, because we want this to be more enlightening. Let me, Please, let's not. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's not do that. Uh, if you want to do that, read the book. Uh, let yes. me show you something here on Twitter, because uh, we, we, this is a much bigger conversation. Eli Rivera says, I've read books by authors who tell the story of others in a respectful, acknowledging and informed manner. This one doesn't leaving this very thoughtful and spot-on thread here. And then, I'm just showing you some of the conversations that are going online, they're very healthy conversations. Scuppernog books, this caught our eye. One person just bought every book in this display, except American Dirt, and you can see all of these fascinating books and being invited to look at them and read them. This display called Our Eye, we spoke to the bookshop co-owner, and this is what he told us. Have a listen. I had a woman who had special order debt who came in to talk to me about it. And the entire controversy really, um, really brought up a conversation about who tells whose stories and whether this was appropriate. 
in the end, she ended up walking out with another book, um, Children of the Land. It's been a great way to start conversations about these issues, and it's also been a great way to bring other Latinx authors to the fore. So we have a we have an issue with the publishing industry and how diverse yes. it yeah. is. Yeah. So can I say can I say a couple of things? Please. Yeah. The the single most responsible party of all of this problem is Flatiron Books. Yes. Because you can people can write a bad book, but if you take the bad book, go mm -hmm. into a bidding war with it, give it a seven figure contract. Mm -hmm. Develop it wrong because they have manuscript development in this process and in here they just didn't do their work. And then give it to Oprah. And then they're shocked that they have a controversy. That is <laughs> an absolute act yeah, of negligence. And and one of the things... Yeah, Ignacio, that's that's perfectly said. I mean, think about the fact that they brought in an Argentinian American editor, and it, then they wonder why we're complaining about how bad the Spanish is. I'm sure yeah. that in the, the countries yes. of pe people who are watching this, you have multiple different dialects of the languages that you speak. Yes. And imagine, you know, somebody purporting to 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 write a particular dialect, but using words from another one. That's essentially what's yeah. happening so, here. So, so, but guess, and I'm is this indicative? This is, uh, and, and, and is this indicative, though? Because we could end up just uh, literally just unpacking yeah. this one book. And okay. the industry is so much bigger. For instance, let me show this. The racial makeup of publishing in the United States. And you can see, let me just show you here. The red area are yeah. books published by white authors, Caucasian authors. Asian will be the orange, a mixed race uh, would be the lighter orange. I can go through and through and through this. This is the is Hispanic authors right here. There's a problem with this pie chart. Yes. Uh, so uh, uh, um, we are more aware of this problem now because of the controversy around American dirt. Uh, Miriam, as you are an author, how would you explain what's happening in the publishing industry right now with authors of colour? Well... I'm super uh, disappointed with what Flatiron said in terms of uh, starting a conversation around this subject matter. Mm -hmm. There's this there's this rhetoric now. Well, at least we've begun this important conversation. I see that argument this way. Imagine a man walks up to me and smacks me across the face and tells me, "You ought to be thankful I smacked you across the face because now we can have an important conversation about domestic violence." We shouldn't yeah. have had to have been smacked across the face to have had this conversation. This book was problematic before Mexicans and other folks showed up to say it was problematic, right? Right, and so the publishing, it was and the publishing our industry knows. that brought attention to this. That's right, the publishing industry another, knows this. Yeah, the yep. data's been there there's for another years. Thing because when you talk about Mexican literature, you're talking about two different groups. Mm. There's a Mexican literature written in English by people who live in the U.S. Uh -huh. and mm. a Mexican literature in translation that doesn't get translated uh, because the translation structure is broken in part, but also because Mexican authors get told that they do not represent a token version of Mexican that fits uh -huh. the readership. So there are many filters that How Mexican do you writers this? have to get to yes, you are in order experts. for them to be representative sure. of Mexico for the white readers. So, so guess you're experts in this field. How do you address this? How are you addressing this? But by trying to force publishers to come to the table and have a conversation. This is one of the reasons that um, the United States uh, the hashtag is so important. It's a way of having it. Um, this kind of organic organizing of people across the nation, of Latinx people and their allies, making their voices heard, sharing their stories, um, demanding that the publishing industry take a look at us and see that, that we do have voices, but they've been ignoring our voices. There are all kinds of uh, roadblocks in place, all these barriers and gatekeepers that keep our, our voices out, which is why, despite, as I said, being 18% of the, the US population, we make up less than 3% of the books published every year. So there needs to be a proactive approach to this. Pub many of the big five publishers have t taken steps. Macmillan's one of the ones that's lagging behind, Macmillan Flatiron. Yeah. Um, so there really needs to be this attempt to bring in authentic own voices and make sure that they tell the stories that need to be told rather than well, having a white face. Sorry, so we, uh, there's yeah. something to which is the media fails here too, uh -huh. because the disproportionate coverage that the media has given to American Dirt would never actually be given to the book written mm. 
either by a Mexican or Mexican-American author, or even by a knowledgeable author about Mexico. Just last year, you had Valeria Luiselli publishing Los Children Archive with great acclaim, and then you have Paul Thoreau uh, publishing On the Plain of Snakes, a very good book, and you have authors like Luis Alberto Rea, who's not a mystery, is someone who sells very well, mm. and all of a the sudden you get this ignorant book, and then it is plastered everywhere. All right, so guess what? When forgive, forgive. you have visible books that the media mm -hmm. does not cover. Right, so forgive me for doing mm -hmm. this, but I, I, we did invite Janine Cummings to be on the show so that we could have a conversation with her. She declined our request. But I do want to just share a little bit of what she was thinking as she wrote the book, what she thinks of the controversy post-writing the book. Have a listen to Janine Cummings. I was afraid. I was really afraid. I was afraid of this very moment of being called, stridently called to account for myself. Who do you think you are to write this book? I want people to understand what's in my heart and that I am open to learning, you know, and that I want, I wrote this book ultimately because I felt all my favorite fiction is the kind of fiction that can put you intimately inside the skin of another person and build a bridge of empathy into the heart of the reader. And I felt that's why I, that's why I wrote this book. I hoped to provoke empathy. I wish you could have seen Miriam's face right then. Her lip was <laughs> curling. She was not impressed. Uh, Miriam, uh, th there's something yeah. for me. The, the the elephant in the room is this is fiction. Are you not asking? for fiction novelists or writers to have the same level of integrity as a journalist? Are we not asking too much of authors? I'm, I'm not asking for an author to, to write with utmost authenticity. I'm asking for authors not to write badly, and I'm asking for authors to write responsibly. Listen to what she said, that fiction is something that allows you to wear somebody else's skin. Do you really want to be skinned and worn by Janine Cummins? And like I wrote about that phenomenon in the review that I penned where I one time walked in on a white woman who was walking around in my bedroom wearing my clothes because she wanted to see what it felt like to be a Mexican. It's incredibly humiliating. Yeah. But the fiction, Plus, argument is, the fiction argument is disingenuous because the book, in, its, in the note of the author, elicits a reading of the book as a fair and realistic representation of migration. Mm -hmm. That's right. The exactly. The campaign of the book elicits this reading. So that they now come and try to hide themselves on the rights of the fiction writers yes. is a very cynical thing because they are selling this book as uh, almost as a book of sociology. Yeah. Ignacia, yeah. you have the book I right, you have the book right there. Re read one of the quotes from the back of the book or one of the bits of the blurb, but read it to us so we, we can see it. The, on the, the front blurb? Of the back. Or yeah. The, yeah. Well, yeah. No, it's just the, what I mean actually is the, the all what? these things where she says at the end, yeah. I was careful and deliberate in my research. I travel extensively on both sides of the border, and you wonder what does she, what does she do? You have um, a... Was any of that she convincing, of, Professor, she read a Professor bunch of Ignacio? Books. Was any of that convincing to you? You exactly. know about research. No. No. She, I, I would it's not ridiculous. accept. I would not accept the representation of Mexico from my undergraduate students. Mm. Yeah. And she reminds me <laughs> of the student who shows up with a badly done homework and then wants mm -hmm. a Navy because she worked very hard. The difference is that this exactly. bad student got $1 million out of her bad homework, so she's hardly a victim. The book is going to be number one in the New York Times exactly. next week, so hardly a victim yeah. of censorship. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so I want to see guess, guess, do you, do you know, it's, shock, it's, it's shocking how much we have to say and how little time we have to say it in. Yeah. Do you know what? how much time I have left to, 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 to use on this show? I have enough time to say, Miriam, thank you. Ignacio, uh -huh. thank <laughs> you. David, thank you. I know, That's we could yes. go on for, more, for much, much longer. Okay. I really do appreciate your input. Uh, American Dirt sold almost 49,000 books in the very first week that it was out. Let me just show you with you uh, an apology from the book publishers. And the book publishers, we acknowledge the discussions on this book and we will have more open conversations. Those open conversations are still to come. We will keep an eye on those. That's all the time we have. Thanks for watching. I will see you online next time. Take care.